Welcome back, guys. Episode five. Number five. Cinco. I don't know five in French. If you know five in French, after you've liked, comment, and subscribed, drop it down below so I can speak better French. Un, deux, trois. I feel like that's one, two, three. I don't know. Who knows? Let's start this episode off with a lesson. The lesson of the day is sometimes from your biggest struggles come your greatest successes. That's our lesson for the day right there. And it's a good one. And let me tell you why that's our lesson of the day. You know, this may or may not be the third time that I'm recording this. A very big struggle for me. But it taught me some lessons. Lessons about patience, things about myself. And it also gave me the idea to split this video into three parts. Because the first time I recorded it got a little bit long. So let's split this into episode 5A, which is the one that you are watching right now because you are a badass. And then we are going to have 5B after that, 5C after that. Why the separation in the video? I'll tell you. 5A, B, and C are all going to be different athletes from Gifted Barbell Club of different experience levels. So we've got a beginner in A, B is going to be our intermediate, and C will be our expert lifter or advanced lifter we should say and this video is all going to be about just reviewing video footage of the snatch and the clean and jerk sometimes complexes sometimes just the lift itself and going over what we actually look for what are the technical cues that we are looking for watching it in slow-mo so we can see the exact positions that we want to hit and if you are a coach or you're an athlete reviewing your own footage this will kind of let you look frame by frame of what am i doing wrong give you a better idea of what you need to fix about your own lifts by watching vicariously others perform the lifts. Without any further ado, we are going to jump on in here. So our first lifter is Courtney Bowie. So Courtney Big Boss Bowie. She's got a background in strength training, so a little bit of strongman training. So she's got some experience doing that weird shit. Just kidding, strongman, we love you. Um, some powerlifting, so a lot of the big three, a lot of squat bench deadlift, and then some experience in like casual bodybuilding as well. Not necessarily with the intent of getting on stage bodybuilding, but you know, performing bodybuilding movements inside of a bodybuilding style routine with the goal of you know muscular hypertrophy. So pretty diverse background of movements. You know, when we first started, she had some very, very common uh, mobility limitations. You know, when we first started, she could not put a, a PVC pipe overhead and overhead squat with it. You know, her ankles weren't compliant. Her hips were weird. Her upper back, specifically her thoracic spine, was pretty much locked in. And she was very, very rounded forward in terms of being very tight to the chest and front delts. So just by performing the movements, some targeted mobility work, you'll see how much she has actually improved. So Courtney falls into the beginner category because she has four months of experience. So if you remember all the way back in video one, we talked about you know how to separate chronologically um, a beginner, intermediate, and advanced. So Courtney is a beginner. She's been doing it for four months, one time a week. So four months, 16, we'll say 17 weeks there at one time a week. That means she's had 17 total exposures to the snatch and the clean and jerk, which is very different than what we'll see with our intermediate who's been doing it for a shorter period of time, but with greater frequency. So Courtney falls more into the beginner category because of her exposure to the specific lifts as opposed to our intermediate who has done them more often. So Courtney's best snatch to date is 60 pounds, uh, 28, 27, 28 kilos there. Um, and her best clean and jerk to date is 80 pounds. So she's currently ramping up on an intensi intensification phase. These videos are about a month old here. So she is running an intensification phase right now and will probably be hitting some PRs here soon. So let's not waste any more of our time. Let's get in here. The procedure that we'll go through is I will play the video all the way through at full speed, kind of let you watch it at full speed, see what you notice, see maybe what you miss, and then we'll slow it down by quite a bit and we'll look at kind of specific positions, errors, things that she's doing well, things that she's doing wrong. So this video is actually a complex. So Courtney, because she is in the beginner phase, does a lot of longer complexes, greater exposure to each position, 
feeling things out, letting her brain get an idea of where her body needs to be at specific times in the movement. So here we've got a snatch pull plus a snatch. So we'll play it through one time at full speed. So we can see the snatch pull there. And now we're gonna go for the full snatch. Good. I know what you're thinking there. That does not look like someone who is a beginner. That person moves much better than a beginner should. I mean, for having a bar in your hand and snatching, you know, 16, 17 times in your life, this is a very good looking lift here. But let's start breaking this down and looking at specific positions to see what looks good and what could be improved. So the first thing that you need to look at is kind of where does the individual start? What is their actual start position? So I'm going to start doing this frame by frame just to kind of look at that. So if we go frame by frame here, we want to stop it before she initiates the lift. So you can tell she initiates the lift here. The bar starts to break the ground. You can see that her start position is here. She has a, it's kind of a dynamic start. It's kind of a static start. So she does this, sets her hips. I'm gonna call it a static start here. So she is kind of static here. So what we wanna look for in a snatch starting position is that the crease of the hips should be in line with the knee or slightly above, actually. So if we look at it, it's kind of hard to tell with the lighting here. Uh, maybe Jake can zoom in a little bit on it, on that hip crease right there. What you'll see is the crease of her leggings there is actually below her knee. So something that I told her today when she actually sent me footage was, let's set those hips a little bit higher in your start position position, everything else looks good. Everything else in the start position here is nice. The elbows are pointed out, the shoulders are over the bar, the upper back is tight, the gaze is set straight ahead, slightly down a little bit, which is what we want to see. The bar is positioned over the midfoot. There's the possibility that you can't see it from this angle, but her knees may be a little bit too far forward. She might be able to benefit from pushing her knees out a little bit so that as she breaks the ground, it's gonna be easier to get the knees out of the way of the bar. So possibly pushing those knees out just a touch, but her grip on the bar appears to be wide enough and we'll be able to see that by where she actually makes contact at the hip. So our next position that we wanna look at, you know, you do definitely do wanna look at her hips as they come off the ground. So the hips naturally rise off the ground to get to where they should have been from the start. So the first thing that happens as she breaks the ground is the hips shoot up a little bit fast in the shoulders, but from this point on, the hips and the shoulders rise as a pretty solid unit right there. Like you don't see the angle changing too much. After the hips reset themselves here, yeah, we see those hips and shoulders rise at the same rate, which is nice. All right, the next position we want to look at is at the knee. What's going on at the knee? All right, so here we are at the knee. We can see the posture from head down looks good. The gaze is still set straight ahead. Uh, the elbows kind of look like they've rotated back a little bit. So we kind of look like we've left that internal rotation and we're starting to externally rotate, which is a little early at this point. And it's telling me that she wants to use her arms early, which is not uncommon for someone who comes from a strength training background, a powerlifting slash bodybuilding background. The snatch looks like something where you want to use your arms. But as Greg Everett says, what do the arms do in the snatch? Nothing until they do everything so this first pull second pull you want to be nothing with the arms the arms are merely hooks attached to the bar so a little bit of an error there in terms of how early she wants to use her arms and we'll see that those errors continue as we approach the hip so just going frame by frame the proximity of the bar to the body she does a really good job of keeping her lats tight and keeping the bar close to the body the problem is the earliness with which she wants to bring her hips through so the, from here, we want to think vertical, 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 vertical. She is not moving vertically here. This point right here, she is already pushing her hips through. At this point here, she should be a little bit more vertical with her shoulders. She should be waiting, driving with her legs a little bit more. Think more vertical jump than a deadlift. So when those hips come through early, I mean, we can just go frame by frame here. At this point right here. So this is the traditional power position. Maybe one more frame. Give me one more frame. There we go. This is going to be like a traditional power position right here. In this position, we want to see the shoulders right on top of the bar. Good. We have that. We want to see the heels flat on the ground, full foot pressure. 
Every percent that your foot is off the ground is a percentage of force lost that you should be driving into the ground. So if 20% of your foot is off the ground, that's 20% of the force that you are losing that you would be pushing into the floor, which drives the bar vertically. Remember, one of those key points on how well you are going to snatch and how much you're going to snatch is how high can you pull the bar? You're not gonna be able to pull it as high if your extension is coming off of your toes. So we wanna stay through the heels at this point and and then from this point, we actually want to throw the shoulders back behind the bar. What you'll see is she does not do that during extension. And you can see that right there. Notice how the bar moves. So watch the bar come off her hip here. Which direction does it go? We want to see the bar move in a straight vertical line at this point. It goes out and away. So this is a good sign right here that you're bringing your hips through too early. You are humping the bar out away from you and you're not actively using the arms in what is about to become the third pull to keep that bar close. In a snatch pull, you wanna shrug the shoulders up, acting like your belly button is particularly itchy and you're trying to scratch it with that center knurling on the bar. So that's our snatch pull. We can play it from here. In the snatch, we're going to see roughly the same thing. So we set up on the bar. Again, what do we notice about that start position is the hips are too low. We should bring those hips up by about two to three inches, pushing the knees out so that the bar can stay closer. At the knee, roughly the same thing. Pretty good positions here. The body has essentially corrected for you. But then we have that urge again to, I mean, just look at that. The bar... You're bringing your hips to the bar instead of bringing the bar to your hip. So she really wants to bring those hips through early. Overall, like, like right here. Hold on. Give me one more frame. All right, one more frame. There we go. Like, ignore where the bar is. Ignore how the bar has moved off the hip. This is a very good extended position here. We have transmitted maximum force at this point through the ankle, knee, and hip. All we needed was slightly better timing so that this bar does not this loop around. And then it becomes this disjointed catch where if we watch it in full speed, it looks very awkward in terms of how she catches the bar. So whoop, did you guys see that? Let me play that back one more time. Watch how she catches it. Whoop. So she almost has to like wait for it. Whereas if the bar had moved vertically, if she had pulled those elbows high, kept the bar close to the body, it would have just landed in the right position and she could have easily pulled herself under. But when the bar is way out in front of you, you can no longer pull on the bar actively to position yourself under. It becomes a hump, let it swing around and then pull it back into position or just hope it lands in the right position. Most people, when they do this and they actively try to pull themselves under, they'll jump forward. That's what you see with that jump forward that some people do. Courtney doesn't do the jump forward. Her feet actually move pretty well. They slide out, she lands flat footed. The problem is that when she lands, this is where the bar is. So she's naturally going to get pulled forward onto her toes. And you kind of see that here. So we see a little bit forward, but this right here is a phenomenal bottom position for her. If she can pull the bar correctly through that third pole and keep it close to her torso, it, I mean, it's gonna add an immediate 15 to 20 pounds on there. So this is a great position right here. Like fix the start position, you know, timing a little bit better on that second and third pull and combine it with this bottom position right here, this overhead strength. And she's gonna be in a great position. I mean, a lot of people would kill for this hamstrings on calves, ass to ankles position, bottom position right here. So very reassuring. And then because her legs are so strong, I mean, she's literally never in her entire career of weightlifting going to struggle standing up a snatch. Boom. It looked a little bit awkward as she stood it up just because she didn't have it 100% secured. So you can see those shoulders wobble a little bit. 
overall, it's a quality lift. We need to teach her how to drop the bar after lifts, but we're working on that. We're working on the bar slams. So Courtney's snatch overall, not too shabby for a beginner. There's definitely some pieces that we wanna correct here, but they're very common errors for a beginner. So let's take a look at her clean and jerk here. Again, we've got a complex here. So the complex on this one is a clean pull plus a clean plus a jerk. Some very interesting things to piece together here. Let's play it in full speed. Maybe, maybe we play it in full speed, maybe we don't. There we go. There's our clean pull. Oh, I lied. This is a clean pull plus pause. Clean pull with pause at extension. So you can see that's why she's stopping up on her toes. Pause. I like that, reinforces balance in that extended position. Clean. And a jerk. Right on. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, you might say, wow, this is like a, this is someone who's very, very proficient as a beginner. These lifts look great. There's not a lot of things that make you kind of grimace as you watch. So let's break it down exactly like we did with the snatch. Let's kind of look at this start position here. So right before she breaks the ground, this is a phenomenal start position for a conventional deadlift. Unfortunately, the conventional deadlift and the clean are very different exercises. So what do we want to change about this? We actually want to see the hip crease here in line with the knee or slightly below. And we want to see her chest up with her gaze set ahead, straight ahead, or slightly down. We don't want to have the eyes down. The body weight will follow forward. We don't want to have the gaze too far up because the body weight will follow, losing your balance behind you. So what we're going to see here is not a great position at the knee because of that compromised start position. So watch the shin angle. In the clean, we should see the shin angle forward. Knees should be over the bar. That is not the case. So what do we see? We see something that basically looks like a very good form conventional deadlift. The only thing that she can do to create power on the bar from this point right here is to just hump the ever living shit out of it. So that is exactly what she does. Pushing that bar and you can kind of see her balance is a little bit forward. I'm pretty impressed that she was able to maintain this pause position right here. Overall, this is a good position right here. This is good. Not great. Better, but not ideal. Contact point mid thigh is perfect. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. This is a good power position right here. Her shoulders could be a little bit further back, but it's because of how her start position was that she wasn't able to get into the ideal power position. But this is pretty good. Extend from here. Look at that. Knees, ankles, hips, all together. Perfect. And what we don't see that we saw on the snatch is the bar is not moving out away from her, which means she's keeping her lats tight keeping that bar close. The difference that we're gonna see in terms of how she fixates the bar going from second to third pull and securing that, that front rack position is gonna be huge. All right, now let's look at the actual clean itself. Some people, they when they clean pull, they do it a little differently than a clean, which is not how you wanna see it. I mean, every time you set up for a clean deadlift, clean pull, clean high pull, doesn't matter what it is, it, you should set up and tell yourself, I'm gonna do a clean. So what do we see here? Oh my God, she does have a good start position. I mean, look at the difference here. The shin angle is forward. The knees are over on top of the bar. The chest is up. The gaze is fixed. Oh, it's beautiful, Courtney. This is what we like to see right here. And you're just gonna see the positions throughout the entire lift just from fixing the start are so much better. At the knee, I mean, hips and watch hips and shoulders. Hips and shoulders all the way through. Rise together. Rise together, I could do this all day. I could watch this lift all freaking day. Such a better position at the knee, shoulders are on top of the bar. We're balanced over that midfoot. A much better, much better knee rebend under the bar to get that scoop. Power position is nice. I would like to see a little bit more patience here. You're gonna see in this next frame, her heels are gonna come up a smidge early. So we wanna keep those down just a little bit longer, drive for a tiny bit longer, let your shoulders get completely over the bar, and then when you extend in the clean, 
throw those shoulders back. Look at that. That's, that's, that's nice right there. That is a very, very nice, clean pull position. The shoulders are shrugged. She is using her arms at the correct time. And you're gonna see what that looks like in terms of a very smooth reception of the bar. No crash, she stays connected. The ponytail whip is phenomenal. Look at that thing. It's doing the whip and the nay nay all at once. Oh, look at that thing. All right. Watch the elbow position. The elbows move up and then she secures herself under the bar. This was a very hard thing for us to figure out. She had a lot of like trying to pull it and then like really actively pull that into position. It was hard for her to grasp the position yourself around the bar. Moves around the bar. Let's watch the feet. The feet are nice. They slide out. They land flat footed. She secures the bar. She rides it down. Same thing as the snatch. Legs are so strong, she'll never struggle to stand up a clean, probably her in her entire life. And now let's get into the jerk. So what do we want to see on a jerk? We want to see that the bar, we can see it from this angle, should stay over the midline of the body, that midfoot position, meaning that it's staying at that center of gravity. We don't want to see the body weight shift forward. We want to see the push the knees out in the split jerk position or in that dip position rather, instead of over dipping forward. Most people, when they doubt their strength, they over dip, it pushes their entire body weight forward. And when they go to drive, it's this like incline bench press kind of thing where they just shove the bar out and away from them. Let's get into our dip here. Courtney does a good job um, of going from clean to jerk. She doesn't spend too much time at the top. Even though she is a beginner, she doesn't spend too much time thinking about it. All right, here we go. Now we're getting to a dip. And we dip. Good. This is enough. This is enough. This is plenty of dip right here. Please tell me she's not going to keep going. Just give me one more frame. Oh, no, she kept going. Maybe she's going to drive from here, right? Oh, no, she kept going. That has to be the end of it. This is the deepest dip in the history of Olympic weightlifting. There's no way she went deeper. Oh no, tell me it's over. Make the pain stop. Again? Not more though. Oh, even worse. And now we kind of see here, watch these two frames tell the story of what's gonna happen when she goes to drive. The bar shifts forward, she shifts forward. When she goes to drive, where's the bar gonna go? It's good, it's, it's a good extended position right here, but the bar has, her entire body weight was forward at that bottom position right there. The only thing that can happen from here, watch, here's where we started the dip. Here's where the bar is at the end. It's just too far forward. We're gonna drive this thing vertically. She does a really good job because her arms are super strong. She's just gonna like push it back into position. But here's a good comparison here. Does a really good job. I mean, the she could definitely throw her front foot further out. And we want to see that back foot land before the front foot. So the timing is a little bit off there. But here's where the bar lands. Now let's, let's go frame by frame here. Here's the bar lands. Like forehead, mid to front head position, when we really want to see that back over her ponytail. So watch what her arms do because they're incredibly strong. They say, whoa, that feels like shit. Okay, let me put this back where it's supposed to go. <laughs> and you can see her resetting that. Where it landed. Where it landed right there. Where she actually wanted it here. Now, one other thing to watch is that front shin angle. Anyone who has too much weight on their front foot or caught a jerk forward is going to have a forward inclined angle of that shin. Hers isn't bad, but you can tell she's very far on that front foot because when she puts the bar back where it's supposed to, watch the shin angle change. Now we're vertical. I'm gonna tell you one thing. If Courtney Bowie catches every single one of her jerks like this, there's no amount of weight that I can put on the bar within reason that she's gonna miss. So if she just puts the bar right here every time, just by fixing that, you know, the body English, that forward lean on the dip part of her jerk, she's the, the limit does not exist for how much she can actually clean and jerk. 
the clean is great the jerk has small errors but i mean when we look at this right here some some more corrections we could make we could take that back foot and we could angle that toe in so slide that heel towards what is that like a dog door back there or something so angle that back toe in we could bend that back leg a touch i think it's just a byproduct of having a lot of weight on her front foot um, but other than that she's not tight roping it she's not catching super narrow her shoulder position is great here the bar is where it needs to be and you're going to see that you know for her recovering is pretty easy in the jerk she's going to go front foot halfway back foot to meet staying there and then one other thing that Courtney definitely needs to work on is this right here. Slam the bar on the ground. Just slam it. You made a jerk. It was heavy. Slam the bar. Victorious. Nope. No bar slam. Courtney, we got to work on it. All right. So overall, again, a lift that you might look at at full speed and say, damn, that is a very proficient lift there, but when you take it frame by frame, when you slow it down, you can always find some things to perfect. And one thing to note about weightlifting is they will never look, the lifts themselves will never look perfect. But small tweaks, little, little bit of refining here and there is how you find those one, two, five, ten extra kilos on each lift to continue to progress, avoid injury, get stronger and more proficient over time. I know that Courtney Bowie is going to do exactly that because she continues to do it every single day. Little bit of snatch, little bit of clean and jerk. That is what a beginner will look like. Now, one other reason that I want to throw in here at the end here that I call Courtney a beginner is because she makes different errors every time she, do, she does the lift. She isn't in, at that intermediate phase where she does the same thing wrong every single time. There's always little tweaks to be made there. Part of that is just because she's so new, only four months of experience. Another part of that is because she's only getting that one exposure per week. But guess what? Courtney just increased her Olympic training volume by 100%. She's doing two times a week now. So the PRs are going to be flowing for this girl right here. Snatch, clean and jerk, beginner lifter. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you picked up some tips there, maybe some, some tricks that can improve your own lifting, some positions that you want to look at on your own videos. I am, as you know, at the underscore squad father on Instagram. I love watching videos like this, breaking it down, going frame by frame, telling what, telling you what you can work on. So if you do have a video that you want me to look at, feel free to DM it over to me. Maybe you'll see yourself on a future episode of how to suck less at weightlifting. Two episodes coming your way next. We've got our intermediate episode featuring Courtney Taylor, the Battle of the Courtneys. So another Courtney is next. And then we've got our advanced lifter, Evan Smith, coming after that. Stay tuned. I will catch you on that next one. As always, stay gifted.